with atrial fibrillation, the heart doesn't beat as regularly as it should do. So let's look at considerations for exercising with it. Hi everyone and welcome to Exercise for Health. I'm Richard and today I have some exercise advice for people living with the condition atrial fibrillation. If you're new to this channel, we offer tips, advice and exercises each week to help you manage your health condition with physical activity. So go ahead and tap the subscribe button below and the bell icon if you want to be notified of when we upload a new video. Atrial fibrillation, or AF, is a heart condition that causes an irregular and often abnormally fast heart rate. A normal heart rate arrest would be somewhere in the region of 60 to 90 beats per minute, but with AF, the heart rate can considerably be higher than 100 beats per minute. This can cause symptoms such as dizziness, shortness of breath, tiredness, and can feel like heart palpitations, where you feel your heart is pounding, fluttering, or beating irregularly for a few seconds, and in some cases for a few minutes. Sometimes, however, it doesn't cause any symptoms at all. It can affect people of any age, but it's more common with older people and those living with chronic conditions, including heart disease. AF is also a risk factor for stroke, as the irregular heart rhythm leads to small eddies in the blood that don't flush through the chambers of the heart very well which can lead to a formation of a thrombus or clot being ejected from the heart. Some people take medications for it, and in a small number of cases, people are offered a cardioversion, which is a form of controlled electric shock therapy for the heart rhythm, or catheter ablation, where the area inside the heart causing the abnormality is destroyed using radiofrequency energy, although this intervention is generally used for atrial flutter, where the rhythm in the atria is more organized and less chaotic than the abnormal patterns caused by atrial fibrillation. AF can be defined in different ways depending on the degree to which it affects you. For example, paroxysmal AF is where your heart beats irregularly at times but not others, and persistent AF is when you are in AF all the time. I'm going to provide advice specifically for exercising with AF. However, as mentioned earlier, most people suffering with this condition are likely to have other comorbidities, including other cardiac conditions. Therefore, exercise programming and considerations for those conditions may take precedence over AF. If you've been diagnosed with AF, then it's common to worry about whether you can exercise, but crucially, exercise is very unlikely to make your AF worse. If you suffer with the paroxysmal AF, then it's better to exercise when you're not having a bout of it, as you may feel more breathless, some chest discomfort, or feel faint from exercising. Therefore, it's worth checking your pulse before you start to ensure it's not elevated or erratic. If you suffer with persistent AF, then you can exercise whenever you feel like it, as long as your heart rate is under control, you're stable with your treatment, and you're generally feeling well. Exercise will bring you the same benefits as anyone without AF, However, monitoring your exercise will be different. As it's likely your heart rate will increase and decrease faster and be much higher during exercise due to a decrease in stroke volume, the amount of blood that your heart pumps out on every beat, checking your pulse or recording your heart rate won't be an accurate way of monitoring your intensity. Instead, it's much better to use the rate of perceived exertion scale of zero to 10, based on how hard you feel you're working. During the warm-up, you would aim to gradually build up to a three on this scale over a period of about 10 minutes. Then during the main part of your workout, which would be 50 minutes initially, including any rest breaks, rising up to 30 minutes over a period of six to eight weeks, your aim would be to achieve a four to seven on this scale using a mixture of aerobic and strength exercises in an interval format. Then for the cool down phase, which should also last for about 10 minutes to reduce the likelihood of heart arrhythmias, your aim would be to gradually reduce the intensity to a three or below until you feel you're back to a pre-exercise state. The type of exercise or physical activity you choose is dependent on what you enjoy, but you should aim for three to five sessions a week, totaling 150 minutes or more. This can be in the form of brisk walking, an exercise class, using the gym, going for a cycle ride, swimming, dancing, a fun sporting activity, or even a home exercise program. 
Don't forget though, if you suffer with other health conditions, then that might have an effect on what you choose to do. If you're looking for a home exercise program for the heart, then check out my cardiac rehab workout that you can follow by clicking the pop-out banner up here. I hope you can take something away from this video today. If so, please give it a like by clicking the thumbs up button below and share this video with friends to help this channel grow so more people can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching and remember to stay active, keep moving and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.